It's time again to better know a commander. We're back with episode 10, and we got four great commanders for you. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this video with someone you care about. So up first, we've got Elminster, we've got Hapatra, a great take on Krenko, and finally, we're finishing it off with a budget version of Quasar Augur of Agonies. Thanks so much for your support. Let's get into it. This commander deck is going to be cheaper than a bag of gumballs, but when you're done with them, your opponents are going to feel like you smacked them with a bag of gumballs. We're talking underused cards for Elminster. So Elminster seems like you would just want to be using his abilities, but it's really the static that goes hard for this deck. Whenever you scry the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn costs X less to cast, where X is the number of cards you looked at while scrying this way. So that secretly means that this is a ramp card, if you can believe it. The scrying is awesome and everything, and you're going to choose what you draw next. But if we can chain together spells that scry, we get to play a lot more spells every turn for way cheaper. And that's the goal. The best thing here is scrying cards don't cost a ton of money, so this thing is super cheap. Let's dive into it. Some really obscure cards become ramp spells, like Candy Trail. When enters the battlefield, scry two. That means your next instant or sorcery costs two less to cast. One mana, get two mana? Uh, that's Rite of Flame. Uh, better Rite of Flame in this deck, very cool. One of the lamer Jaces out there has plus one scry. That means every turn you're going to get to scry and reduce the cost of your spells. Imagine a turn where you play Elminster, you plus him, you draw a card and scry two. Now this costs two mana instead of four. Then you play this and you scry four and draw two. The next spell you cost will cost four less to cast. That's what you're doing with 4C and all four eyes here. Ugin's Insight is a five mana sorcery. Blech. But at a minimum... It's going to be a three mana spell where we scry five and then draw five. Sorry, draw three. My bad. It turns out Elrond's really into scrying. So Lost Isle Calling is a card you're going to want. Whenever you scry, put a verse counter on it. Then you get an extra turn spell eventually. You're also going to just want to play Elrond, Lord of Rivendell. When there's the battlefield or another creature enters the battlefield, scry one. If it's the second time this happens in a turn, the ring tempts you. You also get to play his home, Rivendell, as one of your lands. This has two mana scry two, which ends up being free because the next spell you cast is going to cost two less to cast. That's some wild stuff here. How about we add Cryptic Annelid to the deck? When enters the battlefield, scry one, then scry two, then scry three. Now the next spell you cast, instant or sorcery, costs six less to cast. Come on, four mana makes six mana? That's awesome! We also get to play OG, the Exquisite Blade. When there's a battlefield, scry, gain two life and scry two. Awesome. Since we're going to be adding some creatures to the deck with powerful ETBs for this deck, we want to be playing Soul Herder and some instants. End step, you're going to blink something, you're going to get some scry, and then you're going to have a reduced cost card on your end step. We also want just free scry in our upkeep. So we're going to play things like Thassa, God of the Sea. This card's a little bit more than a gumball, but still way cheaper than it ever had been. Take a trip back to Kaladesh. Glimmer of Genius is four mana, scry two, draw two. Very likely this is only gonna cost two mana, and then it's gonna scry you two, so it's gonna cost two less for your next instant sorcery. How about one mana, destroy target creature with power four or greater, then scry two. That's a pretty good removal spell. And uh, I don't think I've ever recommended Guiding Bolt for a commander deck. I also have never recommended something to put stun counters on permanents. So play freeze in place. I got four more underrated cards to help you with the deck. We've got Crystal Ball, one mana scry two. That's right of flame over and over. We've got the Magic Mirror, which you just get to jam in the deck. You're going to play so many instants and sorceries, this thing's going to be three mana every time you play it. We've got Oath of Jace, draw three, discard two, and then you get upkeep scries, which is really nice. How about Omen of the Sea? It gets you a scry two, which means the next spell you cast costs two less to cast. That's a French, essentially a free spell here. And then what I would consider to be the best card in the deck, Eyes of the Watcher. Whenever you play an instant or sorcery spell, you may pay one. If you do, scry two. This thing's going to keep ramping you and keep you going. Your choice of payoffs is really up to you, though. You could play extra turns for two mana. You could play expropriate. You could play control magic spells to take everyone's stuff. 
it won't really matter. The payoffs are gonna be great. What's really key is you get to play a bunch of cheap cards that say scry and that they secretly are ramp spells. And once you realize that, this deck is gonna absolutely sing for you. Hope that helps. Here's what a black green token deck could look like. There's lots of great choices for this kind of deck out there, but at this point, we might as well go with a classic. Say hello to Hapatra, Vizier of Poisons. Hapatra gives us board control and makes us death touch snakes. Those are tokens, right? So right away, there's gonna be lots of synergy with Amonkhet cards. Uh, Nesta Scarabs is a great choice for the deck. And Obelisk Spider gives us a way to drain our opponents as well with our minus one, minus one counters that we're dropping all over the place. Now, the most popular card in Hapatra is definitely Blowfly Infestation. As you take down creatures with counters on them, you get more creatures. So that's just such a boon to the deck and the art's gross. We get to keep the good times rolling with Necro Skitter. As you take down creatures on your opponent's boards, you get them back. So that's really powerful. Of course, with tons of 1-1 creatures running around, we want Skull Clamp to take care of our own creatures as well, draw cards and keep the game moving. A newer addition to the deck is definitely Hooded Blightfang, but definitely worthwhile. You never know when you need to take out Planeswalkers and this will definitely get the job done. Definitely, definitely. Yawgmoth Thran Physician fits nicely into this deck. More minus one counters, more card draw, more proliferation. We're draining the table, so Zulaport Cutthroat needs to be in here. We get a classic sack outlet in Viscera Seer. We also get to play Jahira, Friend of the Forest. This is going to give our snakes the ability to tap for mana, which is really nice. And obviously we're jamming Pitiless Plunderer here. More treasure tokens for us means more mana, means we get to spend more mana. We've got Toski, Bearer of Secrets, as a payoff for the deck. Get in there with all our Death Touch snakes, draw a ton of cards. I saw this card and I'd never seen it before, Flourishing Defenses. This is just another way for us to build up our board of tokens. We also get to play Dictate of Erebos. This will punish your opponents for having creatures die, because your creatures are going to die too. And in lots of black decks I've been recommending lately, you might as well play Braids of Risen Nightmare. Great way to sacrifice things, draw cards, and have your opponents lose life. Art's awesome, card's great. So, green-black tokens, lots of death-touching snakes, Apatra's where it's at, the two mana casting cost is absolutely huge. Hope this helps. Imagine discovering Krenko Mob Boss for the very first time. This is the quintessential goblin deck. I remember playing against it the first few times thinking, ah, oh, it's just goblins. And every single time, by not respecting his name, I got absolutely crushed. So here's what you can expect from a Krenko deck. First of all, we have Goblin Matron, which is literally a tutor for any goblin. That seems good. I think that O'Hare Ashenil, Deepest Might, is actually a really good fit for the deck. But goblins are for combat damage. False, they're not for combat damage. You pick them up and you throw them at your opponents. You'll see. We're also gonna play Virtue of Courage to get some fake card draw. Goblin Warchief belongs in the deck, obviously. So does Goblin Chieftain. Think of goblins as little treasure tokens. We're using Skirk Prospector too. Now here you go. This is how you actually play with the goblins. You play Impact Tremors. You play Perforos, God of the Forge, who could be the commander too. You need haste, so you play Hammer of Perforos. You need tons of mana, so you play Brightstone Ritual. You play Goblin Bombardment to again, throw the goblins at your opponents. Here's another sack outlet, Goblin Churgeon. There are four different arts for this card, but this is clearly the most ridiculous. You give your goblins the clamps, draw some cards, why not? We've got Goblin Lackey to just tuck some goblins onto the battlefield for free. We're playing Battle Him to generate tons of mana. We have to protect Krenko and give him haste, so Lightning Greaves go in this deck. I don't even recommend Lightning Greaves in many decks, but this is probably an absolute necessity. We're playing Thousand Year Elixir, again, so that we can tap Krenko as soon as humanly possible. We're playing Throne of the God Pharaoh, because in any typal deck, you want your creatures to get sideways eventually and drain your opponents on the end step. It's like double strike for your uh, one ones. How about Hazaret's Monument? Every time you cast a goblin card, you get to rummage. Let's untap Krenko twice in a turn and play Magerite Stone. Don't drop this card right away, but play Mass Hysteria when you're ready to do your thing. And finally, we get to play Muxus, Goblin Grandee. Fun fact about Muxus, it's not actually just one goblin. 
It's the group of goblins that carry the chair. Every day, they take turns riding in the chair. There's some goblin lore for you. Also, you could play goblin lore. This deck is super powerful, it's super fast, it's a great time, your opponents will be frustrated, and that's when you know you've had the most fun. Hope this helps. A budget shielded deck? Yeah, we can do that. Quaza, Augur of Agonies, is a rare opportunity for us to take on Shieldred the Apocalypse, but with more colors. We got lots of budget options. Because you're drawing lots of cards, you're gonna see lots of cards. That means we get to play lots of basic lands. And the real question is, how do we deal 120 damage by drawing cards with a deck that only has 100 cards in it? But we got a solution for that too. Three color budget Shieldred starts now. First up, we need some wheels. Windfall costs a few bucks, but is definitely worth it in the long run. We also have to play Dark Deal, same kind of idea, puts our opponents down a card, puts us down a card, but we're drawing lots, so we're okay here. Teferi's Puzzle Box is gonna be one of the cards that really gets us going. Now when we draw our cards, we're putting cards on the bottom of our library, so we're not losing any cards to our graveyard, and that means we get to keep pinging down our opponents. Obviously something like Brainstorm is really good here too. It essentially becomes Lightning Bolt. Psychosis Crawler is great, you discard your hand, you draw a bunch of cards, you deal a bunch of damage. I know people might think, well, you're gonna have no cards in your hand at some point if you're doing a wheel here. That's okay, we don't check star star until abilities and spells have resolved. So even though there'll be a moment where you have no cards in hand, it won't check until you're finished casting a windfall. We get to play Notion Thief in the deck now, which means you can take all of your opponent's draws. And a little out of left field, but we get to play Cliffhaven Vampire. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses life. That means when you draw a card, each opponent is going to take a damage. That sounds familiar, right? How about these four goofy guys and gal? We got the Council of the Four. More time to draw cards, create some night tokens. A rare mythic recommendation of Azor the Lawbringer. You get to silence your opponents. And then it's got Sphinx's Revelation attached to it whenever it attacks. That's great. I haven't talked about this card since pre-release weekend of Rivals of Ixalod. <laughs> Let's double down on that and play Alinda in Azor as well. Same kind of thing, harder to get rid of. Volhar is gonna reward you for discarding instants and sorceries and that's a great thing as well. It also allows you to cast some of those discarded cards and that's a great boon here. We get to play Obscura Interceptor. Another Cephalid with some ability for us, some lifelink. We also get to play Toulouse, Clever Conductor. This is gonna get us to the ability to use some of our cards again. How about a couple ways to get the cards back into our deck? First one I have here is Emergency Powers. You're gonna cast it on a main phase, so you get to play a seven drop for free. We're also gonna play Commit Memory. The Commit is whatever, but with Vohar you can discard it. And then you get to cast Memory and shuffle all of the cards back into decks and draw seven. So that's always really good here too. Good to play my favorite Demir card, which is Whispering Madness. Everybody windfalls, and then it has Cypher, so you stick it on your, one of your creatures. Then when that creature deals combat damage, you get to do it again. We are looking for repeatable cheap effects, and Whispering Madness is right up there. How about we cut a deal? I promise this won't come back to haunt you. We've got another windfall variant in Flux, and you get to play awesome Richard Kane Ferguson art. A great opportunity to play Narset Parter of Veils here. People won't like you for it, but you're going to get cards and they aren't. We have to play straight up Time Twister, and with the Commander Master reprint, Days Undoing is cheaper than ever. And finally, if you have the right things out, Secret Rendezvous is an absolute house in this deck. But don't tell anyone. It's a secret. So there we have it. Quasar, Augur of Agonies. Secretly Budget Shieldred. Hope this helps.